The News Round on Off The Ball. With Gillette Labs. Get the ultimate shave for your money back. Neon Night Edition, available now. This is News Talk. Now you're welcome along. Wednesday night rugby on the menu this evening. We'll be chatting women's Six Nations and Heineken Champions Cup knockout weekend is upon us. There is pretty much a sellout at the Aviva Stadium for Leinster against Ulster. Rory O'Connor and Grace Davitt on the way after 8 o'clock. Dan McDonnell in studio with his thoughts on Ireland, France, plus Robert Grieve, friend of the show from the Scottish Sun, on their 2-0 win against Spain last night. And Jason Smith has announced his retirement. Clean Foley pays tribute to one of the greats, 53106, the text number. We are at Off The Ball on Twitter. Michael McCarthy, hello to you. Hey, Joe. And Richie McCormick, what's going on? Mind and sense is purified, Joe. How are you? I stop it. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Why? Why? Because we're just talking about it. It's like South 1995 that we talk about. We've talked about 15 <laughs> times in the show in the last three weeks. Blame uh, Scotland. Blame uh, Scotland. It got, to a, stage, well. it yeah. got to a stage this week where... Uh, freed from desire and then I didn't know what the next lyric was but it was so in my head I was like I'm checking the lyric so at least I can sing it properly Your love senses purified? No, Richie just Mind said Mind and senses purified oh, Alright, okay, sorry yeah. I still, yeah. that's, oh, that's yeah. annoying now because I did recognise it when you said it mm. Okay yeah. But anyway, but it, was, it was that much in my head. <laughs> or, I was like, I've got to or indeed, your defence is terrified, depending on who your well, yeah, it's favourite Northern Ireland striker is. Uh, text in lyrics you mistakenly. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's endless, endless, oh, endless, man. endless, endless. No, please don't. <laughs> no, no, that's oh, that good. Next, that, that, that'll get us through the next twenty minutes here, Richie. <laughs> God knows the sports news won't. <laughs> Having, having previously presented a breakfast show, I can attest to that kind of text in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's kick off the news round bright and early and we'll see where we go how about that wow. <laughs> Jesus news round often we keep I, I prefer that in Scotland I have to say yeah oh, what are we going to say about Scotland exactly Ali McCoist adds a lot I mean it, it, he gives them great likability from afar I would say that okay I like Scotland anyway I think I do when they're not anywhere associated with Ireland I have to say yeah in general I was delighted about the result last night but. <laughs> there is a text in anonymously Scotland Beat Spain 2 0. Guess what the first song was played at the final whistle? Well, I think Richie has already alluded to that, hasn't he? Is that what yeah. you were alluding to? That's exactly what I was alluding uh, to, Joe. I didn't realise that. I alluded good and proper. <laughs> uh, so it was played pre match at the Aviva, Ireland, yeah, France. We know. Yeah. yeah. Stewie Burns sang. Did we have this conversation yesterday? Last night on the Oh my God, I'm so yeah. sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I can't remember what we're talking about on air and off air anymore. I'm so sorry. Right, let's press on. The news round is brought to you with thanks to Gillette Labs. Get the ultimate shave or your money back. Neon Night Edition available now. We will be talking about Jason Smith at Half 7 with Clean Foley. Richie, you can give us the fairly weighty credentials. Yeah, Jason Smith, the fastest man in Paralympic sport, has announced his retirement at the tender age of 35. Smith won six Paralympic gold medals, including the 100 and 200 metre doubles at both the Beijing and London Games. The visually impaired sprinter from Derry stayed unbeaten during a Paralympic career, which began at the 2005 European Championships. He also won nine world titles and six European gold medals. I will now segue into a role of strategy manager strategy manager, pardon me, with Paralympics Ireland. Smith sat down with John Duggan today explaining his reasons for retirement. Yeah, just a combination of different things just between myself <coughs> and my family. <coughs> Felt like now's the right time to, to make the move and, and close one chapter and, and open the next. Uh, Lee Moore from that interview at Half Seven. So extraordinary career in so many ways and in many respects 2020 Tokyo his finest hour his farewell run almost in that he was not expected to come through and obviously he's got you know this unbeaten record which you really don't want to be uh, pipped at the post mm. uh, it, lots of injuries dogged by injury all year questions over his age and just a sense this is one too many and uh, he long lined up alongside uh, highly rated Algerian who had been faster than Jason Smith all year yeah and beat him yeah that's a hell of a way to go that's an amazing way to tip top off a career absolutely yeah yeah but just I suppose continued excellence all the way through his career you know and like you know despite the the visual impairment that obviously made him a para athlete you know this this guy was even despite that 
one of, I think at at one point certainly the fastest man in Ireland, you know, and uh, obviously he doesn't have the the hundred meter record or anything like that. But I know that there was years when he was the fastest man, uh, the fastest athlete in the country, you know. So again, just an unbelievable record, like and just like a total Paralympic legend as well. So like even outside of this country. So yeah, it's good that he gets his due on a day like this. Uh, texting, did Arthur start your eulogy? Not that I know of. I thought it starts with Joe was a radio man. <laughs> to his it core. goes from there. It goes from there, you know. It's a slight tangent reference, which is waiting for you in all good bookstores now. Uh, Mick and Tyrone. Okay, so the mistaken lyrics starting to roll in. Just the oh, tidy no. content we need. <laughs> Richie's really unhappy with this. I won't dwell on it overly. But uh, he says, I don't really get this. It's just uh, beyond me. I always thought Forever in Blue Jeans by Neil Diamond was about a reverend blue jeans kind of a hip <laughs> priest so, I don't, I don't so uh, for reverend blue jeans Joe oh for reverend <laughs> as opposed to forever in so, oh, do you know what I'm pretty I, sure I'm somebody go, had, go on sorry Richie I'm willing to go along with this if Joe just keeps misunderstanding what the misunderstandings <laughs> are <laughs> Uh, keep them coming. Reverend blue jeans. Yeah, I can. So I can hear it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he thought that was Mick and Tarrant thought was a better reverend in blue jeans. <laughs> <laughs> quite sweet, really. You wear the kind of like the the uniform uh, with yeah. the collar and the uh, jeans, like a cool priest. <laughs> Your father trendy. Father yeah, trendy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see it now. What would Neil Diamond like to write a song about? So there is potentially bad news. One of Ireland's. Uh, well, maybe only strong kicking options in the back line is a big injury worry for the weekend, Rich. Yeah, not only that, she's uh, gone for the entire tournament. Enya oh. Breen has to miss the rest of the women's Six Nations. She sustained a knee injury in last week's defeat to Wales in Cardiff and requires an operation to rectify it. Leah Tarpey and Kayla Waldron, part of the wider squad but not involved last week, are ruled out of the France game. Greg McWilliams has called up Anna McGann, who made her debut in last year's Wales Test and was subsequently involved in the Sevens programme. France were 22-12 winners away to Italy last weekend and along with England are one of the competition favourites. Hannah O'Connor and Dana O'Brien were on media duty today and the former was asked if this Saturday was about damage limitation. Absolutely not. No, we are not playing a Six Nations game to go, to have that attitude. As I said, our squad is full of, you know, youth and exuberance with a mix of senior people as well. So it's a beautiful balance, but like we're definitely not show, we're not in this competition to make up the numbers or take foot, uh, you know, step off the gas as we go into this week. So no, very much heads down, see what we can do. And as I said, it's those little tweaks that we feel as a squad, we're very confident that's going to make a big difference for us and how we go about our business on Saturday. It's very tricky, Mick. There is such a dichotomy between how the players talk during the week and then... The reality of the situation. The in, in, in spite of the clip we just heard. They have to prepare themselves for the match. Like, I mean, and they have to prepare themselves for a contest. Like, there's no... They should believe exactly that. You know, today, there's no point in going into it saying, she would be lucky to keep this to 50. Um, where are France, by the way? Because I was saying last night, is like, there's no chance in the home games... But I was, I suppose, more thinking of where England are and where we know England are. Are France, like, they're obviously next, aren't they? Like, But yes. they're a good bit off England, aren't they? Uh, no? Uh, well, England have won the last four Six Nations, so mm -hmm. you, you would say certainly they're a bit off at the moment. There is some, from an Irish perspective, optimistic talk that there is a degree of transition about France at the moment post-World Cup and against Italy and Parma on Sunday they made a lot of handling mistakes and were a bit off it. Uh, but I think we're still into damage limitation. Ireland were so poor in Cardiff. I mean, it was really worrying the extent to which Wales have just galloped off into the sunset and left Ireland totally behind. The French scrum is big and strong and monstrous and was against Italy. The Irish scrum was obliterated for yeah. large portions of the game against Wales. So it's really difficult. And, and, and you know... We all understand that the bigger picture in Irish rugby when it comes to the women's game is not good and it's been neglected. And so you do feel a real degree of sympathy for players who are going out at Musgrave Park in front of their families, live on national television, free to air, and it could get very ugly, just like last week. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's very tricky. And then it doesn't get much better with England on the horizon. Again, the home game's going to be bad and Italy are... Very good team. Very, you know, you'd, you'd say they're probably better than Ireland at the moment, and Scotland are improving. So, 
you know, they're, they're t- we're knocking out to make up the numbers, but they're certainly not even competing for third is the reality at the moment. Yeah, it feels like Ireland's men's team in the like early 90s at this stage, doesn't it? Whereas like there's no, there's no light at the end of the tunnel and it just seems like it's just going to be this way forever. But, you know, th- these things, I suppose, do change with proper structure and so on. But yeah, in the meantime, these this team has to go out and endure, I suppose, uh, these Six Nations tournaments. And, you know, it's not to be... I, I do think of, like, when the Grand Slam was won 10 years ago now, how, like, I mean, it developed over the course of Ireland being very good. But in general, there wouldn't have been automatic coverage of a women's Six Nations in the way there is now. Oh, no. And, you know, when the opportunity is there and the uh, eyes have been on it in a way that it's never been on before and it gets better every year in that regard, so this is the biggest one yet, Yeah, it's such a pity that Ireland are at their lowest. It sure is. Because this is such a shop window. Ten years and ago. You, I watched better. the match on Saturday and I was like, I, I went out of my way to make sure I, I could see it mm. and I ended up having to watch a lot of it on my phone and it was just so disheartening and honestly the thought of having to do it again this weekend has nothing to do with women's rugby men's rugby it's because yeah. this is a poor team that doesn't have a chance you know it's on Virgin Media 1 though so I'll be watching don't worry Joe I mean just I'll be saying. there uh. <laughs> uh, Conor Limerick has one text of the night I'm happy to announce that at 14 minutes past <laughs> 7 go on sit back and enjoy uh, re misheard lyrics my friend thought that the final line of Aaron Levine included uh, the name of the Taoiseach of the day. Almost akin to God Save the King, God Save oh the Queen. Oh my God. As this was in the 80s, he thought the last line was Charlie Hahi Aaron Levine <laughs> as opposed to Shulav so, Kenny Aaron Levine. <laughs> so we had one in the, um, in the... That's great stuff. I don't know whether this was apocryphal or not, but it was a story in school. Like well, I, was, I was always around like the American Embassy or something. There was, there was somebody looking for this song that they'd heard in Ireland and went in to the, they were in the American Embassy and asked for this song. So I can't find it anywhere. The last line is shoving Connie around the green. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great stuff. To imagine somebody at an Ireland match screaming at the top of their lungs, Charlie Hahi around the V. <laughs> yeah, it's just too M- good. And is that why, and by the way, when Fianna Fáil aren't a government anymore, do they think it's like Shina Fina Gale? Oh, I wonder, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How long did this last? It's Was it a political like, anthem? Did this make it through to Bertie? <laughs> when did this end? Bertie still sings it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, great stuff. Uh, so, we'll... Stay with the Charlie rugby. Charlie Hawhey. Yeah, it doesn't work for any of the rest of them. No. It doesn't like, work for Gareth Fitzgerald. Like. No, you'd have to break the <laughs> tempo. Yeah. yeah. John Bruton, Bertie Ahern. Also, Connie and Hawhey rhyme. Yeah, no, yeah, it worked yeah, really exactly. well then. Yeah. yeah. So you can see how he didn't realise he wasn't singing the right thing. And Kenny, as Arthur found so it points out, absolutely oh, perfect. perfect. Yeah, yes. yeah, Is go. this how we judge a good Taoiseach now? <laughs> Uh, you can see as well because like if you're at a match and you're screaming Charlie Hahi it's not so out of sync with everyone that you think oh yeah we're all in this sorry the idea that anyone would ever be screaming Charlie Hahi's name in any context <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, Six Nations player of the tournament has been announced and I think you know we got to be honest here uh, good sense has prevailed uh, I think so, yeah. Antoine Dupont voted today the Six Nations player of the tournament the France scrum half beat competition from his teammates Thomas Ramos and Damien Penault. Dupont also picked Grand Slam winning trio Hugo Keenan, Mack Hansen and Caelan Doris. He attracted 26% of the 138,000 votes cast. To retain his title, Dupont is only the third player to achieve that feat and joins Brian O'Driscoll in winning the award on three separate occasions. Mack Hansen, bless him, suffered a double snub as despite his player of the championship shortlisting, he missed out on a place in the team of the tournament. Ireland teammate James Lowe was named on one wing with Damien Pinot on the other. It's a team dominated naturally by Ireland who take up 10 places of the 15 with France having three and Scotland two. Indeed, seven of the pack are Irish. Hard to quibble if we're getting 10 spots, I suppose. Uh, we'll talk to Rory O'Connor after 8 o'clock. Grace Stabbitt as well about the Six Nations and suddenly I mean it's hard to almost get back into the club scene it's Heineken Champions Cup round of 16 knockout and it's Leinster Ulster and it's a sellout yeah I know and, and like even for Munster like their season is yeah. on the line in many yeah. ways you know away in South Africa you know so actually it both games are intriguing yeah but it, it sneaks up and it does every year but I find even more so this year. It's like the idea of, it's probably because Ireland won the Grand Slam. Let's yeah, face it, like, exactly. You know? it, yeah. But it just it feels uh, it feels completely weird. But I think once come the weekend, mm. 
yeah. The Munster game, by the way, is half past 12 Irish time if you're looking out for it. They're in, Dur- in uh, Durban, is it? Yeah, okay. Uh, in Durban against the Sharks team who are amazing on paper but aren't quite clicking on uh, grass. But uh, at home, it's at sea level Durban, but apparently the heat is off the charts. Uh, when I say off the charts, mid-twenties. Humidity's high. Yeah, early kick off, not great. Graham Rowntree was saying that they've been doing some heat training. I'm not entirely sure what that entails when they're hanging around Limerick. Are you? No, is it? Are you well, sure they've been cold. in Limerick? <laughs> uh, oh, maybe they got a wager in the Six Nations. He said yeah. we've been topping up our heat training. Right. Okay. I don't know. It's maybe curious. it's wearing like big, massive, like lag and jacket coats when they're doing their <laughs> training. Because that it, yeah, that I doesn't know. sound very scientific. I have no, to say. Maybe I, will, I mean, I was thinking, is this like uh, what's the, the hot yoga lattes or what? Are they yeah. Bikram. Bikram, Bikram training. Yeah, maybe they're Bikram doing, rugby. I don't know what they're doing, but anyway, he says they've been heat training for Durban. Anyway, we'll talk to Rory O'Connor and Grace Stabbett after eight o'clock. Uh, Waterford have appointed Keith Long as their new head coach. The former Bohemians boss replaces Danny Searle, who was relieved of his duties earlier this week. And Long will be in charge for Friday's visit of Finn Harps to the RSC. Uh, Piment entertained Dublin rival Shelburne in a top of the table clash tonight in the women's Premier Division. Third also plays fourth with Shamrock Rovers at home to Wexford Hughes. Treaty United host Cork, Cork City. Bohemians play Deal or Waves and Athlone play Galway. All five games kick off at 7.45. And Virgin Media is to broadcast the League of Ireland fixture for the very first time. Friday week's Dublin Derby clash of Bohemians and Shamrock Rovers will be screened on Virgin Media 2. League of Ireland director Mark Scanlon says increased visibility will help engage more fans than ever. The game is already a sellout. Okay, very good. Um, There is a text in wondering, is it possible, probable that Irish women's rugby will never have the numbers playing to be competitive, regardless of structure, funding, etc. Jim in County Clare. I don't really know. Jim is the honest answer. For perspective, there are 188,000 registered adult female GEA players, so that's football and camogie, and there are 8,000 registered rugby players. So there's a, the huge disparity on that front. How that compares with Wales and Scotland, I couldn't tell you. I would certainly presume England are producing, but just by dint of population, uh, for, you know, far more uh, female rugby players. But certainly at the moment, 8,000 isn't looking deep enough. I can say that much. Now, it, is it beyond the Ben's possibility they can raise no. those numbers? No, I don't think it is. No, it isn't. And, and it's, it, a lot of it is about structure. But we had a conversation... Um, how long ago? Three, four weeks ago. Uh, Jerry and, and Andy were in and talking about the the RFU's reliance on the school game to produce players. The RFU don't have the track record of producing players through a club system yeah. or an academy system, and those those schools are I don't know if they're all all boys, but most of them are, and they certainly aren't. There's no rugby culture among the girls, if there is girls in in, in those yeah, schools. Yeah. And, you know, if you just take it that, that way alone, yeah. where are, we don't have a huge playing population in men's rugby either compared to GEA or compared to England, for example, but we can compete with them and beat them. But if that culture isn't coming true from a young age or from a school system, is the IRFU structures there strong enough to do it? Not yet. Without them. And, and, and it doesn't, like, you know, that's not possible in the men's game, so how would it be possible in the women's? Yeah. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. A classic. Uh, <laughs> Elton John was Jesus in, Christ. Elton John was in Dublin <laughs> just this week, was yeah, he? Yeah, he was in the point hey, last, last night, night, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Last night, the point. Yeah. Good on you. Three arena, come on. Oh, sorry, okay. Sorry. This. The point. It is. What's wrong with that? It's not the point. It hasn't been the point People's in about 30 years. But sure, it's, that's the, the name. The newest stop still is. Yeah, and the whole area is called the point. I think it's okay to say it. It's like saying Lansdowne Road. I'm not against saying Three <laughs> Arena. I don't have an anti-commercial... Uh, uh, Fair enough. Exactly, yeah. It's just the point. It's the point. Fair enough. Uh, Isn't it? No, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably pedantic. Um, apparently Sorry, they were in the Tree Arena. He was in the Tree <laughs> Arena last night. I saw videos of it. Look great. Hey, we got five stars. I read a review saying it was. Have you top, ever seen Elton John live? No. I, do you know genuinely because this was a cancelled concert, um, COVID and all that, and I, I went to buy them. I was like Elton John, like they were exorbitant. Oh, it's I just so couldn't strange. justify it at the time. I can't remember how. I mean, we're talking the cheapest ones were nearly three, four hundred thirty, and you got to buy two. Yeah. Jesus. I was like, oh my god, no. Well, I mean, she could buy her own. 
Modern couple. <laughs> I saw him in Vegas when he was doing his oh, residency wow. there, yeah. In What's hmm. Vegas like to watch somebody? Anybody like actually? Yeah, it was great. Imagine it's a it weird was brilliant, yeah. It was uh, well it's a yeah, it's a slightly different. It's not as fanatical, I would say, because people are just going yeah, and, yeah. you know, we saw I think two different three people in that week or whatever, but no, Elton was spectacular. Like it was an experience. He's one of those people you should see live when the opportunity is there, even if you do have to fork out seven hundred quid or whatever. I'm not sure, you know, if that is the cheapest you could get if uh, from, from day memory, one, that was maybe, all that was yeah. left. Maybe yeah. yeah, from day one it might be different to yeah, but apparently his voice was as good as ever and he was yeah, in brilliant form and five stars. Yeah. I guess there's the added pathos and poignancy of it's a farewell gig and he's a 75 year old Elton John now yeah no mention of Tony Dancer in the gig last night though no no do you know who Tony Dancer is no he was the he was the he was the 1980s actor for television he was in every sitcom uh, who's the boss was. man who's the boss yeah was who's the boss wasn't it uh, yeah it was yeah you'd know him if you saw him guarantee you he was uh, I'd say he, he was, was in about yeah, four sitcoms did you by any chance go and see Celine Dion as well yeah you knew, did someone just ask you to say that? Your wife texted me. Yeah, yeah. That's not the idea. She was brilliant. <laughs> She's got personal hotline here. She was spectacular. Spectacular, yeah. She, she was said. really good. That was, uh, so I was dragged along to that, right? I was dragged along to two. I absolutely wanted to go to see... Um, I wanted to go see Elton. Yeah. And I was dragged along to Celine Dion and to Britney Spears, right? I will say without any hesitation that Celine Dion was a brilliant gig she has an amazing voice and it was a really really good gig yeah. Pretty Spears was one of the worst things I've ever been at in my entire life I got I went out and got refills on two different uh, uh, you know 45 euro rum drinks or whatever see maybe in hindsight <laughs> oh, she wasn't in such a great place okay well yeah that, no, that's absolutely fair yeah. but it's more just that like it, there was no you know the way you say oh well I saw it in person and actually in the way I'm saying about Celine, Celine Dion, Dion yes the redeeming qualities just weren't there for me for the Britney gig unfortunately right okay Cause like, there was a guy beside me the World Series was on at the time and the Kansas City Royals were in like a game 6 or game 7 yeah. and it was a guy beside me with his girlfriend or wife in head to toe blue Kansas City Royals gear <laughs> and it was on his phone the whole time I'd say it was the worst night of his life right yeah they Brit- won though Britney in her, in her own way is iconic so there is something about seeing her but I yeah um, yeah I kind of regret not seeing Elton John you might have That's another a- chance he's had a few farewell <laughs> tours <laughs> there is that so uh, there's a text in and this is kind of an interesting point um, the RFU just need to pay 50 grand a year to 20 GA players and after two or three years they'd have a competitive team see it's just not that simple what are you doing with them for two or three years they can't just sit around and train every day and not play matches that's the problem. Like, so the RFU have handed out these contracts. So you've got these 25 players hanging out at the high performance unit. You've got a few others playing in the English Premiership. You've got some others playing AIL, which is not good enough. So they, what are they doing at the high performance unit? Like, Linda Zhang is a prop. So I think she's one of, like, two front rowers contra- contracted. Yeah. So who's she scrummaging against? Yeah. So, like, the notion that you just throw 50 grand at 20 players, you got a team. They need to be playing rugby. That's why this Celtic challenge was invented essentially in the last while and why there was a combined provinces is to try and get that level of yeah. player that might be bubbling up some competitive games in their legs. And that's yes. why we've seen them graduate into the senior squad this year. But there needs to be so much more of that. And you can't just magic that out of thin air. You can't just magic other, other players and other teams out of thin air either. No, and it turned out that the Welsh teams and the Scottish teams were very under strength because their best players were yeah. in the English Premiership. So actually the quality of opposition wasn't even up to much. We had a text in earlier, uh, misunderstanding or mishearing lyrics came up. And somebody in the 80s thought that the end of Aaron Levine had the Taoiseach's name of the day. In this case, it was yeah. Charlie Ha uh, yeah. uh, So Eddie and Ennis has texted in. Back in the 70s, 80s, as a young fella, I also thought it was Charlie Ha in Aaron Levine. It's great to finally know I wasn't the only idiot. I can't wait to tell my wife we were just laughing about it a few weeks ago. So there were two of them in it. Oh, there's a but support group the, out there. There's loads of them. I love the say. translation oh. of it as well, though, because it would literally just translate. The last line would be Charlie Hawhey, the soldier song. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what does that mean? I know, but it's not enough <laughs> to throw you off the scent either. The t shirt is the soldier. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and he's a song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a bulwark <laughs> against all oncomers. Yeah. Yeah. God, it's uh, it's so funny. So, Rich, we are pressing on. Do you want to give us the last story or two? Yeah, Emma Mulligan says his body can no longer endure the demands of inter-county football. The Leitrim forward has called time on a career that stretches back to 2006. Now, the 35-year-old 
helped Leitrim win back-to-back FBD Insurance Leagues in 2013 and 14. It's quarterfinals night in the Airgrid Ulster Under-20 Football Championship. Defending champions Tyrone faced down in Oma. Last year's beaten finalists Cavan host Monaghan. Fermanagh play Derry and Donegal take on Antrim. And all four of those matches are about to throw in. They got underway at seven in the Munster Under-20 Hurling Championship tonight. Cork making their bow in the uh, competition tonight. And they trail Waterford by 110 to 18. Three minutes to half time in that one. Uh, there's also three minutes to the break uh, in the other game tonight at the TUS Gaelic Grounds, where it's Limerick 1-8, Clare 7 points. OK, very good. That is us done for the time being. Richie, thank you. Nice and lads. Nate McCarthy, thank you. Cheers.